Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm April, creator and founder of Lena's Pearls, and today I have a special, awesome guest with me, my husband Josh. And we're Hello. really excited. <laughs> we're really, as you can tell, excited about this new series that we're going to be doing called The Truth About Marriage. And this is episode number one, but we're going to be doing a breakdown series of some of the most common myths and unrealistic expectations, or I guess just overall expectations that people have about what it's gonna be when they get married or what they think marriage actually is. So sit back, relax, 15 year mm -hmm. pros, I guess here. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so let's get right on into it. So, and yes, I do have my trusty notebook. <laughs> so one of the, uh, main myths that we discussed that we definitely wanted to um, share with you guys and um, just get real about is yeah. <laughs> marriage makes you complete. Yes. Okay. So we were discussing how, you know, even in church, you know, we were both raised in the church and church has a tendency to make, um, even though it's not against church, church folk don't start emailing and hitting me up and, and telling me <laughs> off. <laughs> But we have so many groups. We have women's groups and youth groups and choir and all of that kind of stuff. And, and there's no one in the church being real about marriage. It's all about preparation, yes. you know, and the ceremony. Normally and, they have marriage counseling with right, the pastor, but right, that's it. Right, exactly. So, um, and then, you know, what we, what our really our overall point is about church is that you are impressioned to believe that, marriage is it you are not whole well so at the, least at least you know, definitely for me i'll say right. that to be well, true well you want to go ahead and share your personal story about well no not that yeah that no but, okay okay but just didn't. as far as just marriage in general like growing up no different than girls at a young age are taught that they're supposed to have this big wedding and yada, yada. it's it's kind of the same with with men where at least like i said my personal experience growing up it was, you have to be married to be complete. Right. No right. matter what other life achievements you've had, you have to be married in order to be complete. Right. Otherwise, you're not. Exactly. Okay. And that's, that is overall. Um, there is this big, I don't know, this big fog over the unrealistic expectations of what marriage really is and what it means. And yes. one of the biggest ones that we're really are trying to get over is it just makes you complete that you are nothing until you get married and that is absolutely not true so what we're saying is that you have to be happy with you you have to be a whole and complete person first you cannot this person is not going to miraculously come along and and you're just going all your problems are going to go away you'll never have another bad day you know you um <laughs> What, give me something. That's what big. I say. You, you have to be selfish with yourself before you can share yourself. Exactly. With and that's going to be, we're going to be talking about that too yeah. um, in this series of um, truths about marriage. But yes, you have to be a whole person first. And unfortunately, that's not really what we're taught. We're, we're almost taught to prepare for when our spouse, and for women, especially in the church, and in society, we're taught to, you know, a, a man who, you know, he who findeth the wife you know, find it a good thing and all of that. And yes. we're talk about the virtuous woman left and right, but no one is t teaching us. And un it's unfortunate because that's why the divorce rate is so high because that's what's being taught. But what's not being taught is you do have to stand on your own and you do have to be a complete and total whole person and work on your stuff and be ready to share and merge your life with somebody. And that's what needs to be yes. really- Because it, um, it will make marriage so much more easier mm -hmm if you know who you are and you're comfortable with yourself. Exactly. You're not trying to do something to please somebody or figure, oh, my wife is gonna complete me or that's not how it works. Exactly. <laughs> um, another myth is it does not fix your finances. I don't know where this comes from. Unfortunately, you know, people, um, our single people out here believe that, you know, once you get married, that your mar your financial woes are going to just, 
I don't even know what they think a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're in debt and you get married and you're putting your you're spouse in, in debt. debt. That, <laughs> you're in more debt. It's not just going to disappear. Because <laughs> their debt and your debt and you're combining debt. <laughs> um, it does not mean you will not fall on hard times. You know, jobs change. Um, you know, everything happens. People get laid off every day. And one thing I have always said is we are all just one illness and one paycheck and one situation away from, you know, our finances shifting our life. <laughs> you know, from, from life shifting is what I'm really saying. So you don't know. You know, I'll give my parents as an example. My father and mother were married for 35 years or so. Um, Daddy always had bank. I mean, <laughs> my father worked hard. My mother wanted for nothing. We wanted for nothing growing up, okay? And the last five years of their life together, all of his finances dwindled because he fought cancer for five years before the Lord took him home. And listen, he was, my mother was not sitting pretty <laughs> when dad um, left this earth. So that's what we're, you know, what we're saying about the finances. You have to have realistic expectations and you have to be ready for, you know, I'll, because, I'll, you know, one of the main reasons we wanted to both be on here and I'm, and I'm so glad, glad that you're on here, babe. I'm, I'm so glad because, you know, you can give the male perspective. But, you know, as women, single women, you know, we're, you know, a lot of us are single mothers and, and we're out here, you know, paying all of our own bills and struggling. And sometimes, you know, before we got together, I was single for seven years before we got together. And there were times where I didn't know if I should put gas in the car or go get a dollar and some change worth of lunch meat and stuff and, and fix the, you know, make <laughs> a miracle out of, you know, the money I had to make dinner. And I mean, I had to say, I know it's like the sacrifice without having my husband. And so, you know, women tend to be in those situations and think, oh, he's gonna come along and bills are always gonna be paid on time and we're gonna be sitting pretty and I'm not gonna have to work as hard as, Shoot, sometimes depending on your husband, depending on his level, you gotta have you're gonna have to come up too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you won't have to meet him. <laughs> you know, um, that stigma of a man is supposed to do it all and just your knight in shining armor financially, you that is so false. That is such a big myth. Because you have to bring something to the table too, because long gone are them days, you know, it's hard out here. This th listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, um, the economy is something out here and not all men, you know, are in a position to carry you. And so don't think that automatically he going to come along and all your your financial woes are, you know, listen, I'll because I always talk about being transparent on this channel. When we first got together, you know, Josh's credit was hard. <laughs> right. Man, come on, man. It was. He's looking like why you say that. But it was. And I had to show him. You know, this is what we need to do, and, and we work together and, and built on that and stuff like that. But, you know, you're not always going to—and listen, I'll, I'll clean it up. He was—he <laughs> he had money. My husband always has a good job. My, he was on point, and he did meet me. Let's, you know, we were both right there, but, you know, we couldn't really build and put things in our names and do what we needed to do at the time because there were some steps that we needed to take. So— I use that as an example as, you know, it's not always going to be perfect. The financial circumstance is not going to just automatically go away. And let me tell you what, some of these men out here that are okay and, and, and you know, their credit is on point and everything is great financially, you as a woman, you're going to have to meet them because he might have to help you clean up some stuff before you guys can do anything. And you're going to have to deal with things being in his name, houses being in his name, cars being in his name. And then, you know, they always complain, um, we as women, you know, well, I don't, you know, he go today or tomorrow, it's all going with him. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that's just some of the realities. Um, sex life, you want to tap into this? The sex, sure. the sex myth. <laughs> well, here's, e even me, I thought the same thing until, of course, I had to grow. But I thought, okay, getting married, that I'm get sex whenever I want. It's it's there. It's my wife. It's, it's mine. So, but then you have to realize and factor in. Of course, it took us some years, <laughs> but once you start factoring in the kids and the different work schedules, and depending on if somebody had a bad day, well, if my wife had a bad day, and I'm in a good mood, and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm ready to have sex. But okay, she's in a different place, had a rough day, had to fight with the kids to do this and do that, then. Okay, I got to realize that she had a bad day. So today, tonight ain't the night. 
<laughs> so, exactly. And then same thing. Then maybe when she's ready, I might not be ready. I might have had a bad day. Yes, ladies, I might be in a goof troop mood and not want to have sex. <laughs> yes, ladies, so it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> The stigma is it's always the husband being deprived, but that's not always no, the case. <laughs> no, it, it's it's you both have to kind of be on one accord and learn each other's emotions and know how to feel. And okay, if she had a bad day, maybe let me try and give her a foot rub or something instead of worrying about right about having right. sex. Right. It's it's just exactly. being real with each other and being on the same page. Yes. And just sometimes it, it look sometimes it could be a week, sometimes two weeks. Before yep. you get back on that page where everything is where it should be. Yes. But you have to go you through have it. To, you have to go through it. And not only just, you know, in the scenario that we were just now discussing as far as being in the same. Sometimes careers, like you might be in a marriage where your husband or your wife travels for work. And it might be a couple weeks. And listen, you are not, that person is not going to bed with you every night, unfortunately. And that is what it is. So that, that marriage you know, the sex life is off the chain is not. And then let's get into sicknesses and, and things of that sort. There might be times that somebody is sick and the last thing that they can even give you is a physical, you know, release there. That's just not going to happen. And now you have to be nurse. You have to be doctor, you know, kids. There's times where your kids are in the hospital or something's going on with your kids. And, you know, not to kind of like keep repeating what you almost said, but basically you have to realize that life happens to us all. Yes. And that is one of the biggest myths, especially for those in the church who are holding off until marriage and, you know, or reborn virgins and all of that. Your sex life is not going to just all of a sudden be off the chain, running around the house, butt naked and all that kind of stuff. It's just not it's just not real. It, sex, all that is just that's not even real. That's not even realistic. And truth be told, as a single person, you're not getting it like that most of the time anyway. I mean, you the different. That's what we're going to we're going to get into dating. Yes. <laughs> we're going to did it. We're going to get into some of the things we've learned. And one of them is sometimes dating is a lot better in some ways than getting married. Now, we're not trying to discourage marriage in this series. No. Please do not take it out of context. But anyway, but just another thing. Also, I mean, even if. We was millionaires and didn't have jobs. It ain't like we just going to be laying around having sex all the time. It <laughs> exactly. Ain't, There's it just life. ain't going to happen. There's like things that. you got to do. <laughs> and truth be told, not everybody is in the mood. Yes. But I'll say another side of this coin. Sometimes, unfortunately, sex will be the only thing you do have. And you got a whole bunch of other stuff that you need to work on in that marriage and in that relationship as a whole. That's another series. <laughs> <laughs> um. If you have issues before, because that's really what the overall point is, too. But we're going to get into some specifics. But if you have issues before, and this is for those who are cohabiting, those that are dating, because, you know, we're we're trying to talk to also those that you are dating, you're living together. Well, I didn't know I would have brought a glass of wine in here if I knew we was bringing it to the table like that, honey. Well, I'm talking. I got to make sure. Anyway. Keep my throat, throat <laughs> hydrated. <laughs> Uh, you made me miss my point. But anyway, so those that are cohabitating, you know, the, the sometimes one partner wants to get married and the other one doesn't. And so for whatever reason, you are, you know, cohabiting. And, you know, there's just going to be those things that marriage is not going to fix. If you have issues before, you're going to have them after. And a lot of times they are amplified. So let me go down the list because we both wrote these notes down. So I'm trying to make sure we don't miss anything. You're not always going to be in love. You're not always going to be in like. There are times that you're going to look at each other like, who in the, why, why mm -hmm. am I here? There was a period in our marriage. Now, we've been married. We're going on 15 years actually married. We've been 15 years together, but now we'll be celebrating our 15-year anniversary, marriage, uh, wedding anniversary this coming January. And for about eight years in this marriage. Yeah. Just keeping it 100. That's what this is all about. Yeah, the first Putting it eight out there. was something. The first eight of this marriage <laughs> was 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 real, <laughs> was real, and we talked about divorce almost more than we talked about the weather. It was like yeah. every time you turned around, it was like we we just probably this is not going to work. We were actually on an amazing um, vacation, and we were talking divorce right there in the middle of the Caribbean, like. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah mean, I remember I had called uh, about looking at an apartment when we got back and mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> you are not going to be in love with this person all the time. You are not. You're not going to even like them all the time. Okay, it's just not going to happen. 
But as long as there is love and you know that when you think about it, when you really sit still and you think about it, if that's who you really want to be with, then that's that is what's going to hold you together and hope, love and hope. Those are going to be sometimes the only two things you have to hold on to to get through. Um, we did kind of talk about schedules, changing careers. Your goals might change. You both might work at the same company. You both might start a business together. You both might just have the jobs that you had for as long as you've been dating and now someone then went to school or something didn't change and now you have a career change and now the schedule is a little hectic. Things are going to change. It is not going to be a fairy tale. It's an adjustment. Marriage is an adjustment. Period. That's really also another core point we're trying to make here is you have to allot for a lot of these changes that are going to come down the pike. You don't have kids, you're going to have kids. If you do have kids, that's going to be a whole nother change. I mean, it's just so many factors and things are not going to always be this way. You be, you, I mean, somebody might gain weight, somebody might lose weight. Someone can, I keep going back to the sickness. It's in sickness and in health. And sickness does not always mean the flu <laughs> or a bad cold. Yeah. You know, somebody is getting, you know, you never know what's in store. A diagnosis can shift that marriage and, and that really will test you. So be prepared for those changes. Understand that there's a possibility that things will shift and you just got to be ready to roll with it. Family members. We do a whole yeah, separate that's, series that's, on yeah. family members. Yes. <laughs> family member, marital you know, influences, you know, outside influences, friends and family kind of goes into to each other. But friends and family. You know, those are some of the big common myth, um, myths that, you know, um, everybody's going to always be for it. And unfortunately, not everybody's going to be team y'all. <laughs> and did you want to kind of go into the whole, we were talking about this, we were talking about um, not everybody's for marriage. So, especially your friends yes. and those outside influences. So you're not always going to be surrounded by couples that are married and you're double dating and they're coming over hanging. You're going over there hanging. You know, you're going to have those friends that you're going to have to decide. Listen, this come first over here. Yes. This is what comes first. And you're not going to be an influence for me to jack up home. Excuse no. me. And that's even... No, um, that's that's, that's family members, too, and in-laws. Your marriage is your marriage. It's not your family. <laughs> it's that simple. And you're going to have to put your foot down because the symbol of the ring is that unbreakable circle. Just the, the two of you. Yes. So sometimes when, when things ain't going right and you feel as though you need someone to talk to, your, your spouse is who you should talk to. That's right. And look, if it's something they did wrong or whatever, and look, let them know. This is what I feel as though you did wrong. I didn't like it. And discuss it. That's right. But don't go talking to other family members and stuff, especially when you get a hold of a family member that is, is not fond of your spouse. Because they're definitely going to end up putting seeds in your head and, oh, well, you shouldn't take that. And, oh, you should do this. You should do that. The next thing you know, y'all talking about divorce. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's a lot of unfortunate influences. And, and let's just keep it all the way 100. Society today does not favor marriage. Not, not a no. good marriage. Okay. Not a productive, positive marriage. Society today, you know, you, people always talk about these side pieces and... and these, um, what are they called? These girls that go after married men, um, sugar babies and all that kind of stuff. Society, sugar, that babies. sugar babies, is that what they're called, babe? I don't know. I don't know. Them girls that make a, pretty much a career out of being a mistress. A you side know. chick. Yeah, well, that's. Side chick. Yeah, side, but they call yeah, them, some, yeah, some mess. Anyway. Getting um, old. I don't know all those different I mean, terms. I don't, I don't even care because I'm not one, never have been one. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, you know, um. The, the world out here is just not for marriage. It's just not. But you have to be for your marriage because no one's going to fight for it but the two of you. And it has to be important enough for you. And truth be told, let's go here with it. Kids, too. Kids, too. We're a blended family. Okay? Two boys, two girls. I gave him girls. He gave me boys. We're the Black Brady Bunch. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and so... Merging them families together, you know, you're dealing with other, you're dealing with co-parents from the other side and everything like that. And at the end of the day, 
this union, you know, we've learned over the years that kids are not going to come before it. Because first of all, yes. we can get into it a little bit, but we're going to do another episode yes. of us uh, specifically geared to this. But kids leave. Kids leave. Kids get their own lives if you're yes. raising them correctly and they're raised it with love and, and the one and thing I've always said this. was God forbid if something happens to me mm -hmm. they're going to be taken care of That's right. no matter how old they are whether a family member steps in or right. something somebody's going to take care of them That's right. so you shouldn't be saying something about putting your kids before your husband or, or your wife and oh that's my baby and yada yada and but yeah that's that right. that will be a whole nother subject yeah, we, I can go on we can to go other about that especially that. single mothers <laughs> you know we're we're gonna talk about that with single mothers and their sons and stuff like that. Um you know you have to you have to form an unbreakable bond. When it comes down to this, can nobody talk about my husband? You know, I could talk about my husband to myself all day long, but you can't <laughs> And vice versa. And same thing with family members. This house, this union, this us, n nobody's going to come in here and change anything. And you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And another myth is the, the normalcy. These expectations based on what you think the norm is. Your marriage is what you define your marriage to be. If y'all like playing dress up, if y'all like eating liver, if I mean, it could be, yeah. babe, give me some examples. I mean, you know. Not saying that these are us. <laughs> no, but, but look, but sometimes what, you look at other couples and look, like I said, growing up, I always looked at like my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. They both had good jobs. Mm -hmm. They both, you know, went on vacations. They did this. My mom bought stuff from my dad. My dad bought stuff from my mom. And I was like, man, I can't mm -hmm. wait to get married. I can't. Because that's that what it is. that was the impression. Like, mm -hmm. even, like I said, going back to growing up in the church, that was the thing where like, you didn't have anything going on until you got married. Then you was, oh man, yeah. I got married. I'm the man. Mm -hmm. And but that's the impression growing up as kids. That's what we was Talk. even if it wasn't even said. That's what you seen. So you just thought that's what it was supposed to be. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So stop basing your marriage off of what you see in other marriages and even your parents' marriage. You're not going to have that. You're going to have what you two decide and what you've grown, what you grow into. And, and that goes back to everything else. These outside influences, these other family members, these friends. You have to create and live in the marriage for you and your spouse. And it's going to be the norm for you. And, and truth be told, I'm, I'm almost saying this because I want you to take the pressure off of yourself. Take the pressures off yourself. If, if John and Tammy are getting it in every day and, you, and they claim they're getting it in every single day and da 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 and you and yours aren't, there's, that's them. You know what's going on in your household. You know the reasons why. Stop comparing their lives and their marriages and these reality TV show marriages and all this other kind of stuff. Stop basing your marriage off of that. Your marriage is going to be what you, your marriage is going to be for you. You two are going to be perfect for each other. It's not what's perfect for us may not be perfect for the next. We might do stuff up in here that other couples think, y'all do that? <laughs> yeah, yes. we, we both... Play the PS4, Grand Theft Auto. I'm on it all day and long. We get online and play with the kids, and <laughs> we love doing it. It's, yes, it's <laughs> I'm a, I've been a gamer. I was a gamer before my husband came along. He just got me into it, <laughs> back into it, rather. You know what I mean? So, you know, and people look at us like we're crazy, and then they go relationship goals. No, that's what works up in here. If your girlfriend does not want to game and y'all become married, don't all think she's going to become a gamer. If, if it's based off of what you think, stop. Stop basing your marriage goals and what your expectations of marriage are off of someone else. Because we even had to teach our children that, you know, yes, we go away twice a year. Yes, we're blessed in many ways. But see, our kids and I always I think the Lord in heaven above. I just got to say this side note that we met, courted, dated and got married and raised pretty much all four of our children before social media became what it is today. Yeah. Because this social media mess. That's one of the biggest problems. But anywho, our children, we had to we had a hard time teaching them that what we have this we had to build this. So a lot of Facebook and stuff wasn't out here when we were in our grind and when we didn't go on trips and when yeah. we it was all about the kids and we running up cards to make sure school is done and then paying it off by the time the next season. It, like <laughs> them financial um, strides that we took. Those are things that, you know, the struggle is real out here. And. So our kids are trying to base what they want to do, even as single adults, you know, off of what we did together. And it's like, that's not, 
you have to understand something. I, we both have, we know what it's like to have a little piece of something car. Yeah. You know, and stuff <laughs> like that. And we have, and then, but we are proud of them because that's a whole other thing. But we are proud. Our children are doing really well. But, you know, it, we had to explain to them. Even, I'll say, we both became parents very early. And, you know, I had my first, we had what? I had a Nina, my oldest, when I was, a week before I turned 18. And so, you know, and her sister came four years later. And then I remember which one of their sweet 16s were we planning or trying to figure out what they want to do for their sweet 16. And they said, well, mom, what do you want to do or something? Or was their 18th birthday or something? It was like some pivotal birth, significant birthday. And she said, well, what, well, what did you do? I said, baby girl, I had you by this age. <laughs> so do what you, it's what you want to do. Not what mom and dad was doing. We was raising kids. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, come on here. So you have to base your marriage and, and, and make it and cultivate it based on your experiences together and what works for you and your family. Stop basing your marriage and what you think it should be off of what someone else is doing. Stop it. Yes. Because it, you're going you're gonna to crash and burn. Watch that, but talk about it. Be realistic. You know, and, and your disappointment. You, you have to definitely be realistic and, and think going back to work schedules and this and that. Okay, some people just, it's a spontaneous thing when it comes to sex. Sometimes, depending on the schedule, you might have to try and plan something. But you have to base it off of you. Mm -hmm. Don't go off of what somebody else did, which you've seen in a movie, or this and that. It's, it's got to be, like I said, a, a team. It's got to work for you. Right. That's Marriage it. Is work. <laughs> it is work. And it's conscious work. It's conscious work. And we'll get into love languages and all that, but it is a conscious, you have to consciously be present and work out your marriage. It's not going to just work itself out. It's not going to just be because we married, it's, he knows I love him and he, she knows I love her and we're just, it's just going to be in bliss. And we're, no, because everybody, you know, we're, we're two separate individuals that merge together. So you're still an individual person. You don't lose your identity. That's another problem. That's another myth. You're not going to lose yourself. And I say all that to say that life gets in the way of all of us. It, we all got to deal with stuff. We all got, like, you know, Josh was saying, we all got careers and so forth and so on. So you can sometimes lose each other and you have to work. It's a, it's work. It's, it's conscious work to go, darn, you know what? Babe and I haven't had a date night. Babe and I haven't da 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 da. Shoot, me and Babe haven't even sat down and just watched TV. There's times that we actually schedule and we'll get into the hows and all that and some of our techniques and how, how we, we kindle and whatever. But those are things that you have to consciously, we, you have to consciously, consciously say, I love you and show in your love languages that you have defined in your marriage that is the way that they receive love from you. That's work. You have to work at that. You have to work to learn it and then you have to work to know how to give it. So that they are receiving it. You know, we're, you weren't born together. <laughs> Even twins got to learn each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you, you have to, you know, it's, it is work. When people say marriage is work, we gonna, we're here to tell you exactly what that means. Because that's the problem. There's too many general, generalities out here about what it is. Well, we're here to give it to you and give, and give it to you raw. Because there's too much fluff out here. And that's one of the reasons why we started this series, because we just want to get real and we want clear, realistic expectations out here. And hopefully, you know, we'll save people from divorce and, and, and we'll let people they'll, they'll have freedom knowing that this is something that I got to work for. This is something that's going to merge and I'm going to have to put some effort into. It's just not going to just miraculously because you had this big. And that's another thing. A lot of people you have to figure out, do you want the wedding or do you want the marriage? Because when, okay, okay, yes. because listen, you know, a lot of people, you know, you get so absorbed in planning this big, gigantic, humongous, you know, celebration party. And when everybody goes home and y'all finish opening them gifts and get them money envelopes and all that, it's just the two of you. <laughs> now what? <laughs> so, you know, and then. One of the myths about marriage, too, is staying together for the kids. That's going to be like another series that we're going to be doing, too, on this. One of, we'll talk about why we feel, and in our experience, that's one of the worst things you can do. Get married for kids and staying married for kids. So, you know. But did you want to add anything else? Because that's pretty much it. We just wanted to come on and say, hey, introduce our new series, The Truth About Marriage, Episode 1, Myths. <laughs> some common myths and um we're gonna probably be doing this once a week yeah, welcome to the channel babe
Thank you. <laughs> As always, don't forget, hit like, please subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> please subscribe. And do not forget to hit the notification bell so you can be alerted and notified when we upload. If you have any comments, if there's any issues or that, you know, some of these myths that we discussed here today that you have experienced or you know to be true or, you know, you want to share and you, you know, just want to open up the conversation about, feel free. The comments section is an open platform as long as it's positive and it's uplifting and encouraging. They won't be deleted. We do respond to all comments. So please feel free if you have any specific questions or advice or guidance that you might need would like from us privately or content ideas, feel free to email us at lenaspearls4 at gmail.com. Um, also, follow us I don't on have Facebook. email yet. I'm not special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't stand you. <laughs> uh, feel free to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll leave all of the information below. Until next time, be blessed. We'll take... <laughs> I can't with you. Bye, everybody. Until next time. <laughs> What? That's... <laughs>